Thank you. Namaste. Yeah, thank you for joining me. This is a delight and helps me stay motivated to keep teaching when students keep showing up. So that's good. And faith is another great motivator. We're more likely to keep trying if we're convinced that we're doing the right thing and that we'll succeed. Shraddha is a Sanskrit term that implies a direct understanding of divine truth resulting in unwavering faith. This type of intuitive wisdom reinforces our conviction that our efforts are rightly ordered and will ultimately be successful. Connecting to Shraddha helps to build faith in ourselves and our decisions, keeping us motivated on our spiritual journey. In Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, he states that Samadhi is near for those whose aspiration is ardent. Shraddha provides the faith that motivates us to keep moving forward, trusting in ourselves and grace to help us accomplish our life's purpose. Vajrapradma Mudra is the gesture of unshakable confidence, unswerving trust, unwavering faith, interlacing the fingers, the thumbs pointed upward, place it over the heart. This mudra fortifies the vessel of the practitioner. Trust, self-confidence, these are powerful in our motivators in our spiritual practice. The vajra is the mythic weapon that defeats self-doubt. Vajra means diamond-like, indestructible. And we'll breathe, you can rest your hands back to the knees for viloma pranayama. Viloma means against the grain. Viloma is an interrupted breathing technique that separates the thread of the breath in order to better understand the greater relationship to the whole. It helps cultivate lung capacity and control of the breath. This is a three-part inhalation and a pause of a few seconds between each stage, and then one long exhalation, emptying all the air out. So try it together. Inhale a little bit. Pause for a few seconds. Inhale a little more. Pause there. And then fill the lungs, inhaling to capacity. Pause at the top of the inhalation and then exhale, let it all go. Continue that three-part inhale. Pausing, 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 and exhaling. Good, you're doing great. Breathing through the nose. Good posture. The hat's the way. All right. Now, I'm going to extend the legs, lean back, tilt the head back, lift the chest. Just let your head rock a little from side to side. Good. And then we're going to come around to kneeling on hands and knees. So first, just circle the hips, inhaling forward and exhaling back. Letting every part of your body enjoy that movement. And when you're ready, change the direction, circling the other way.
Back to the center. Hmm. Cat and cow stretching. Look up on the inhale and tuck the tailbone on the exhale. <laughs> inhale to sway back cow and exhale to an angry cat. Keep the fingers strong, clawing into the mat. The arms hugging to the midline. Good. Now come into that uh, sway back cow pose. The sitting bones lifting up and start to walk the hands forward. Come to puppy dog. Keeping that curve in the lower back like a ski jump. Squeeze the knees, the chins, and thighs in towards the midline to accentuate that curve in the lower back. Inhale, press down through the palms, lift up through the armpits, and exhale, draw in through the navel, scoop the chest through. Another breath. And lift the back up. Walk the hands under the shoulders. And now, the downward dog, curl the toes under, lift up the knees. Inhale, soften the knees, and exhale, press the heels down, lengthen the arms. And pulse with your breath. Wonderful. Good. Keep the wrists facing forward. And then we'll lower the knees down. And come to child's pose. Bow forehead to the mat or to a block, maybe the hand. So you can press the forehead down against something. Make the back of the neck spacious and the shoulders broad. And sometimes I like to rock my head a little side to side and get a little uh, temple massage here from the floor. Okay, we'll lift up from child. Sit to the heels, hero pose. Draw the shins in, lift the chest up. Keep pressing down through the toenails. Activate the shin muscles, the ankle muscles, protecting those sensitive joints. If you want more of a stretch, you're going to lean back to the arms, lift the hips, or continue on down to your elbows. And you decide how deep to go in the pose. You know from your intuitive wisdom where your body is capable of going. And then the fun part, lifting back up. And lift up the hips. Come up to a high kneeling position or camel pose. And support the lower back. Squeeze the buttocks. Again, keep the feet active, the toenails pressing into the mat. And you're going to tilt the head back, keep pressing the hips forward, and if it's possible, we'll reach down to the heels and lift up the heart. Great. Good work. Good. Now lift up the arms, stretch up with the thumbnails. And then rest down here, relax. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back to downward dog and have a little fun. Curl the toes under, lift up the knees, and stretch the hips back. Now for the fun part, widen the feet or walk them in a little closer to the hands. And then thread the right arm underneath, twist and hold the outside of the left leg. Yeah, that's a right. <laughs> twister. Right hand to left shin. There you are. Press away with that left hand. Twist, look under the armpit. Good, release, switch sides. Right hand on the mat. Thread the left arm under, hold the outside of the right leg. And look up under the right armpit. While the right hand presses forward, the right hip crease moves back. Okay, look great, release the hands. Now walk the feet to the hands. Widen the feet to the width of the mat, bend the knees, and lean back with the hips still clawing with the fingers. And slowly roll the back up. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. All right. Now, I'm going to have a series of mudras with the warrior salute. The first is Anjali Mudra, centering. Coming home to your breath. Feeling that thread of the breath from the beginning of the inhale to the end of the exhale as one continuous thread without interruption. Now, Padma Mudra, the lotus, we're opening the fingers except the pinky and thumbs stay touching. Padma Mudra. <clears throat> This is for our invocation. Step the right foot back to warrior. Right heel down. Solidify your foundation with muscular energy in the legs. Then begin to lift Padma Mudra up. Your invocation, your offering. Good. Now bring the hands down to Vajra Pradma Mudra over the heart. Okay. I'm going to spin around here. <laughs> now we're turning to Warrior Two. Open the arms, shoulder height. Okay. From your faith and trust, you can become an invincible warrior. Wonderful. Got the. Now bring the right hand forward to Vira Mudra. Both hands now interlacing the fingers except the index finger. Balance on the ball of the back foot for warrior three. And then start to lift and balance on the front leg. When you find balance, start to level the back. Vira Mudra for courage. And lower the back leg and carefully come down to low lunge. All right, back knee down. Now right hand is Abhaya Mudra. Right hand Abhaya Mudra, left hand on the heart. You're going to lift your heart up into this left hand by pressing down through the legs. So root down and you can rise through the heart and even extend this right arm. Take it into a back bend, a fearless back bend. And slowly lower right hand to the floor, all five fingertips touching the earth. Bhumi Sparsha Mudra. Pivot the right knee to the side so you can bow the head down below the heart in reverence, humility, and devotion. 
Now inhale, lift, and step the right foot forward to meet the left. Exhale and fold over straight legs. Inhale, rise, lift the arms, palms touch, and exhale, returning hands to the heart and Anj Anjali Mudra. Reconnecting to your source, the source of your faith, the source of your motivation to stay moving forward on your path. Now, we'll do the second side. Turn quickly, and we can do this. So we can make Padma Mudra, and step the left foot back for Warrior One. Beginning with invocation, this offering of the lotus flower. Strengthen the back leg, hug muscles to the bone, so you're invincible. Now bring hands down to Vajra Pradma Mudra over the heart. Open the back foot for warrior two. Inhale, lift the heart into this unshakable trust, faith, and confidence. Now open the arms, Virabhadrasana. Doing wonderful, great job. Now, Vira Mudra, left hand together with the right. Mudra for courage as we go into our balance, warrior three. Find the balance, lifting up high. And then gradually lean it out into Vira Bhadrasana. Balancing, breathing, and releasing down with the back foot, then the back knee to low lunge. Okay, now left hand, Abhaya Mudra, fearlessness. Root down with the legs, lift up with the heart, extend that left arm, lengthen the sides of the body so you can arch back in a fearless back bend. Now, lower the left hand down. The Bhumi Sparsha Mudra. Bow the head below the heart in reverence. And rise with the inhale. Step the left foot forward to meet the right. And exhale, fold over straight legs. Inhale, lift up. Raise the arms, Anjali Mudra. And rest them at the heart. Connect with Source. Your faith, your inspiration, your intuitive wisdom. Shraddha. Okay, from our warrior salute, we're going to explore some more uh, fun poses. <laughs> we'll reach up on the inhale and exhale fold. Step back to downward dog. Okay, and now we're going to be balancing on ar one arm, one foot. Turn the heels to the right for a side plank and lift the left arm up. You can modify here with the right knee down. Doing great job there. <laughs> All right, and yeah, side plank, Vashistasana. Here's a fun variation where you step the left foot behind into wild thing. Press the left foot down, lift the hips up, spiral the chest open, lean back. It's another back bend. All right, and then lower the hands down. Feet to the mat for downward dog. Now you know what's coming. Turn the heels to the left. Side plank. 
Vashi Stasana. The right arm lift. Good. Roll the shoulders back. Good, good. That's the way. Now, wild thing, you step the right foot behind, press the ball of the foot down, lift the hips up, tilt the head back. Mm. Yeah. Great, and lower the hands and the feet. Press back to downward dog. And you deserve a rest. Sit down and have a seat for Bastrika Pranayama. Hmm. Bastrika is the bellows breath. It involves breathing forcefully in and out through the nose, using the diaphragm to pump the air like a blacksmith's bellows. Now, take a little break here. Make sure you're still sitting comfortably. If you need to, switch legs. And we'll do one more round of our Bastrika. If you're well practiced with that and you feel comfortable adding a little, uh, picking up the pace a little more, you can do it that way too. Doesn't don't have to do it real fast. It's more the the control using the diaphragm and not being all you know, jumpy in the shoulders. So relax the shoulders, focus on the diaphragm. Slow it down and rest. We're all warmed up, strong. Let's go on to boat pose. We're balancing on the sitting bones, lifting the feet, perhaps straightening the knees, perhaps releasing the hands. Good. You have the faith, you have the courage, and you have the strength to control your body, to control your mind. And you did it. Release the feet down and open the legs to a wide angle. Oh, you're going to stagger because we're <laughs> tight quarters. Yeah. And inhale, lift through the heart, roll the shoulders back. And exhale, squeeze quads lifting the kneecaps, drawing the thigh bones into the hip sockets. You're just going to tiptoe the fingers forward a little bit of time, waiting for your body to loosen up before venturing a little deeper into the stretch. the elbows reach the floor, you can make a little support for your forehead with the backs of the thumbs, the third eye resting on the thumbs, or pushing against the thumbs with that forehead helps you go deeper. Complete breaths, full inhalation, and full exhalation. And slowly lift and rest to a straight back. And take the right leg, bend the knee, and bring the right foot over to the left thigh. All right, and revolved head to knee pose, lifting the right arm up and stretching over the left leg. 
I like to use my elbow inside the leg as a leverage to open the chest and stack the shoulders. Here, if you have the strap, you can make a loop with your strap and loop it around the far foot. Hold it with the top arm. And that gives you more space to sort of um, thread the, the chest through and look up. That's great. Release this side and switch legs. Open the right leg, bend the left knee. And just widen the sitting bones, come to the front of the sitting bones, and then hold that alignment with drawing into the core of the pelvis, hugging to the midline. And now we're stretching over the right leg. Maybe there's a strap to hold with your left hand. And you can thread the chest through, the right shoulder tucks under. And over a series of breaths, maybe that strap could be shortened. But you're not going to compromise your ability to breathe. Okay, and release that side. Lift all up. We'll come back to kneeling. And here we're going to step the right foot forward and sit back to the left heel to half split. So I'm actually the heel is actually outside my hip, but the toes are pointed straight towards the back of the mat. And here, because we're kind of off balance, we need the right hand to keep uh, balance and widen the right sitting bone to the side. And once you <laughs> have some stability, hug into the midline. So the legs squeezing towards each other is going to help you keep stable. Fold over the right leg. Again, there might be a strap around the right foot to hold on to. Do whatever you need to to stay balanced. And if you feel in the mood for a full split, stretch that left leg behind. And while you're drawing the thigh bones up into the hip socket, you're also spreading the toes, activating the feet to lengthen at the same time. Okay. And there are deep muscles to stretch, so just be kind, patient. All right, switch sides. Um, that's the hard part, right? <laughs> Getting that right leg back and left leg forward. So you have that half split sitting back to that right heel, sort of inside the heel, and folding forward from there. So I have my left hand off to the side gives me more stability, more balance. The other option is full split. Both legs extend. And using hands for support, press down through the legs so there's a 
a little micro bend in that front knee. You don't injure it with hyperextension. And you keep strengthening this quadricep muscle, pull the thigh bone into the hip socket. Strengthen the muscles that you're stretching so the stretch goes into the belly of the muscle and not merely there at the attachment, the ligaments. And deep muscles take a long time to get loose. Now let's go back to three-legged dog. Uh, back to downward dog, <laughs> yeah, which then becomes three-legged dog, right? The right leg lift up. And draw the right knee into the chest and pivot on the left foot. Slide the right leg underneath and out into stargazer. So trying to keep, you can have the hips down if you need, but try and keep the hips up. Lift the left arm. Okay, that's perfect, good. And if you have, <laughs> you know, enough faith, you lift up that outer leg behind the outside of the foot and take that leg out to the front. Hold the outside edge of the foot, maybe. And there you got it. Good job. <laughs> Spiral the chest open. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Step back to downward dog. Woo. Hmm. And now left leg lift and three-legged dog. Tuck the left knee into the chest. And pivot on the right foot. Turn the toes out. Slide the left leg under and through. And open the right arm. Now, yeah, bind the outside of that left foot with the right hand. And stretch it forward. Good, good, good. Step back to down dog. Hooray! <laughs> Lower the knees. Good. Take a nice uh, rest. And two. Hmm. No. Oh. Which side I'm facing. <laughs> All right, step the left foot forward. All right. And lift hands up to the left knee. And just come back to your source here. Breathe, complete breaths. And then lift the arms, Anjali Asana. Good. Lower the hands down. Now windmill the left arm back up. Twist. Gaze up to that left hand. Good. And lower the left hand now to the uh, left elbow onto the left knee. Yeah. Pivot the right knee. Turn it out to the side. And then sweep the right arm up and over the right ear. If it's possible, bring the left hand down to the mat inside the foot. That's the way, good. So the right knee is back away from the front foot, squeezing the buttocks. You can draw the inner thighs together. Now take the right arm behind the back or take the strap in your right hand. <laughs> mm. 
right, hold the strap behind your back, thread the left arm under the left thigh, and then hold on, binding the hands. Start to lift the right shoulder, thread the chest through, head tilt back. Good, that's great. Okay, release the bind. And let's just take to the second side. So, the right foot forward, left knee back. And hands to the right knee to start. Inhale, connecting to source. Exhale, connect to your strength in the core, tucking the tailbone, hugging in, and raise the arms. You are highly motivated. Lower hands down, keep the left hand down, take the right arm back up and twist to look up to the hand. Now bring the right hand down, bring it to the inside of the right foot or on top of the right knee, pivot the left knee, turn it to the side. In side angle pose, the left arm reach over the ear. Take that strap in the left hand, hang it behind you, behind, thread the right arm under the thigh, and bind together. Good, good, you're lifting that left shoulder, tucking the tailbone and release that side. You did it. You're wonderful. <laughs> Let's try that from high lunge. Step the left foot forward. Oh, actually, I need the other direction. <laughs> All right, so where was I? Left foot forward. And lift up the right knee, turn the right toes to the side, the left hand can stay down on the mat or bring the left elbow up to the knee for modification and raise the right arm side over the ear. Mm -hmm. Try binding here if you like, taking the right arm behind the back, the left arm under the thigh. Do you, here's a strap if you need that. If you want to do the bind, that's always going to get, get you started to the next pose. So the next progression from this binding side angle is our flying split. So bring the hands down to the mat, make a shelf on the back of that left upper arm, and wiggle the left toes out to diagonally until they come off the mat. Lift up the back knee. Akapada Kundinyasana. There you are. And step it back to downward dog. <laughs> Hmm. And then step the right foot forward, turn the left toes out, into side angle, Parshvakanasana. You can have the right hand on the floor, elbow on the knee, however you like to modify. You can take a strap behind your back, left arm behind, right arm underneath. Clasp the hands. Tuck the tailbone so you can... <laughs> Good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. 
start with the strap and okay you're connecting somehow you got it good and loosen the strap if you need to to raise the left shoulder good that's the way now with that right arm under the thigh you're already in position for ekapada kundinyasana so you do the arm balance because you have faith you can do this you can balance if you have space and there's not a couch in your way all right but even that must come to an end <laughs> and we can sit down breathe a sigh of relief yes we can lie on our back and take resting breaths with the knees lifted Walk the heels closer for bridge pose and press down through the elbows and feet. Lift up the sides of the hips. You can use hands to help boost the hips up <laughs> or clasp the hands. Roll the shoulder blades under, lift up the heart. Squeeze and lift the hips. That's it, that's right. And release hands and lower the hips down. Hmm. Relax with the breath. Connect to the source of your faith. Your intuitive wisdom. The deep inner knowing deep down in your bones. That this is right for you. This is good for you. Now another bridge pose or try wheel pose if that faith takes you there. <laughs> Lift up the hips, come to the top of the shoulders, and then come to the top of the head. Walk feet in if you need and then push up to straight arms, wheel pose or another bridge pose. And to come out, tuck the chin, lower to the back of the shoulders, and then the spine, rolling down and resting, relaxing, breathing. And extend the left leg down, flat on the mat. Press the right foot into the floor to lift up the right hip, roll right knee across roll on to the left side and extend the right arm to twist and gaze over that right shoulder now inhale straighten the bottom leg lengthen the spine and exhale draw the navel in and twist Complete breaths in and complete breaths out. And then roll onto your flat back. Lift the left knee. Press the left foot down. Slide the hips over and roll onto the right side with the left knee crossing over. Right hand can come to left knee, but don't really press on that knee unless you're engaging through the core and using that muscular energy to press the outer right hip down and preserve the alignment in the sacrum. So twists that are, uh, are seated or reclining <laughs> require a little more caution. You don't you know, sprain your back or tweak your hips and 
And release and rest again to your flat back. And lift up the knees. There we are. And press the feet into the mat, lift the buttocks an inch or two, slide the backs of the hands underneath and sit down on your hands. Now you have a little lift. You can start to raise the legs up and invert the legs. Keeping the hips on the hands is the safest, most relaxing inversion. If your practice takes your hips up <laughs> into other inversions, you can lift into plow with the hips raised and the legs over the head. Or come to shoulder stand. If you're doing shoulder stand, you need to really have strong muscular energy in the shoulders and arms to press the elbows down and the back of the head down so you can protect the neck. <laughs> Stretch up through the tailbone. One more breath. And then bend the knees and Carefully roll back down one vertebrae at a time until the feet rest again on the mat. Once the feet are down, open the knees into cobbler, the soles of the feet touching. Now reposition the hips, lifting and lowering until they're completely comfortable and there's no unnecessary tension in the thighs or groin. Inhale, feel that natural arch in the lower back. And on the exhale, begin to flatten the lower back by lengthening the tailbone and gently pressing the thighs downward. Relax any pressure on the inhale and gently reapply a little pressure, a little more opening there on the exhale. Gently engaging the muscles you're stretching is safer. Okay, now you can lift the knees to the chest and to happy baby. Widen the knees and hold the ankles or the edges of the feet to pull the knees downward while resisting that and pushing the feet upward. Mm. Inhaling faith, trust, and confidence, and exhaling any doubt, uncertainty. Rest and release the feet and stretch out the legs. Bring the arms along the sides of the body and cup the palms underneath the buttocks. Then push down through the elbows, lift up in the chest and let the head tilt back. Fish pose, Matsyasana. Gentle rocking the head and then tuck the chin to come out of the pose and roll the spine back down. Good. Now stretch the arms up over the head and widen the legs, the arms, stretch out to the fingertips, to the toes, and take any final movement, wrists or ankles, fingers, whatever hasn't stretched, your face, 
make funny faces. And then gradually bring yourself to Shavasana, corpse pose, with arms near your side, palms face up, tucking the shoulder blades under the back by pressing the back of the skull into the mat. You can open the chest more easily and rest, breathe more restfully. Now that you're finished all that exertion and effort, you can thank your body by allowing it this time to rest and rejuvenate. Great. The, the harder the asana practice, the, more, the deeper the shavasana. And you can go as deep as you want now to really just completely let go of all that muscular tension in the body, thanking even the large and small muscles in the face and eyes, allowing them this opportunity to soften and rest. And thanking the muscles in the neck and shoulders, the arms, and the hands. Invite them now to let go of their effort. And thanking the muscles in the back, and chest, the abdomen. Let them rest. Relax, soften, and thanking the muscles and the hips and pelvis and the thighs and legs and the feet and toes now resting comfortably. And trustfully surrendering to the support of the floor the way that you can trustfully surrender to that which you have faith and believe in. Your intuitive wisdom, your deep inner knowing, who you are, deep in your heart, deep in your bones. Trusting and having faith in the practices of yoga to help you learn how to control your body and mind to keep the mind more serene and still, able to confidently cope with any obstacle that you encounter. faith and your confidence are powerful motivators on your path to spiritual progress and evolutionary growth.
Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavahe Tejasvina Naditamastu Mavidvishavahe Om Shanti 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 Lord, may we be protected together. May we be nourished together. May we give strength to one another. And may our study be filled with divine radiance. And may there be no enmity among us. Peace, peace, peace. Now begin to deepen your breath and start to reconnect with the muscles, asking them to move again and awaken, starting to stretch and finally rolling over to your side and just waiting a moment until the mind is fully awake and conscious, aware of the room around you. And come back upright when you're ready, sitting in a comfortable seat. Asking again for Vajra Pradma Mudra, for your unwavering faith and your unshakable trust, strong as a diamond. Namaste.